The age of cyberpunk is here. The next stage of evolution. The pinnacle of... Wait a second, it's episode 69! And you all know what that means, right? Yes, it means the next one will be 70. So, are you ready then to throw away your humanity and move on to the cyber stage? Then we shall become Icarus! Yeah, I feel like I have to make some pun with my name here, right? And yes, there are also some custom bubbleheads included. But it's time to transcend now. So, step number one, remove all your clothes. Step number two, uh, oh wait, wait, this won't work. Apparently only females are allowed to be Icarus, so we have to do like Ellen Page and change our gender. From now on I identify as an Imperial Star Destroyer. But seriously now, step number two. Get the Icarus Race Selector holotape from the camp's workbench and here select the Icarus Race. Your character will look a bit messed up here at this point, but don't worry, just save your game, exit Fallout and open it again. Now this looks better, but still kinda weird, right? So, next we use the holotape and select the Looks Menu option. It is said that the Looks Menu provided by this mod is unstable, but it worked fine for me, I didn't have any crashes or anything. So, the first thing you want to do here is go to Presets and select the Icarus presets you want. After that you can do all the usual customization. This mod comes with enough of options for cool glowing eyes, eyebrows, pointy ears and all this crazy and cool stuff. What's also interesting are the different skin materials you can select in the body menu. There is for example this freaky see-through option, so you can see all the tech inside. And also some shiny, chromey looks you can go for here. In terms of clothes, there are a couple of items included, like this vault suit. However, everything else you equip will be invisible and needs to be converted to work with the Icarus race. Follow the guide on the mod page for that. Also, during the installation you can select a specific robotic voice for your player character. Hope you ain't one of them synths, here to spy on me. Lead Just on. look at a trailer. There's so much ahead sure. to discover. Hey. I'll get it done. <clears throat> what did you need? I think it's time to disable your personality subroutine. Very well. Other than that, there are a couple of gameplay specifics, like uh, since the Icarus are androids, they can jump higher, are immune to reds and poison, can breathe underwater and also have a really strong melee attack. Oh yeah, and one very important note, they are totally not compatible with Lava Slap stuff. <laughs> nah, I'm joking, of course. Also, did you notice how smooth and seamless the head model of those Icarus androids is? You can also get it for the player character and even all the other NPCs, completely without the Icarus mod, by using the female head redux. It's the same tech, pun intended, as the Icarus use, meaning a super high poly head mesh. It consists of over 32,000 triangles and includes all the high detailed face parts like teeth, eyes and ears. The quality of those models is just unbelievable. Wow, look at this, there's even an Ahegao preset. I wonder why we need something like... Oh, yeah, right, obviously, never mind. The only downside is that this mod is still in alpha stage and not really compatible with the most hairs, vanilla or modded. The hair models need to be adjusted manually one by one. The modder will probably release an update at some point. Also right now it only works with the Fusion Girl body replacer and I got CVBE, so the textures on my females look all messed up. And also one more thing, this mod is quite performance heavy, obviously, since it affects all the female NPCs. I didn't notice any FPS drops on my system, but the game did occasionally freeze for a couple of seconds in some big places. Or when I used the console command to change the time of day, for example. 
with the 2K option, and with the 4K option it was really hardcore with the freezes sometimes, so yeah, it is quite performance heavy. Installing all those big and heavy mods sure is fun, but sometimes we manage to mess our whole game up. The next mod is super useful for that very scenario. Canary Save File Monitor by King Gath. The Canary monitors your save files every time you load the game, and detects data loss. This is something which apparently can happen when a mod stops working correctly, and that obviously can mess up your game really bad, as we all know. So I tried everything possible and impossible to get this to work, and in the end literally disabled every mod I had, and it still didn't work. So if Canary does detect data loss in a save file you are trying to load, it will display a warning message and you can roll back to an older save. The only problem is that the Canary doesn't support and monitor all the bazillions of mods out there by default, meaning the modders need to manually add Canary support to their mods whenever they release something new. But the idea is definitely great, and hopefully many will follow it. And another great idea would be to install the buffout mod. Yeah, this one deals with Fallout 4's engine and puts it on steroids, so to say. It's pretty simple, at least in terms of explanation. While Canary monitors your save files, this one monitors the engine, meaning fixes engine-related bugs and also creates a cache log, in case your game should crash after all. Then you can submit the crash log on the mod page and eventually get some help. While we are at it, let's also talk about the Encounter Zone Recalculation mod, also kind of a fix you could say. In the vanilla game, once you enter an area for the first time, the enemy's level is calculated according to yours, and each time the enemies there respawn it will be that specific level, even if you do revisit on a much higher level. This mod forces the calculation to be redone each time you revisit an area. However, for this mod to truly work, you also need to download a level uncapper mod, like Encounter Zone No Limit for example, since the vanilla game also has a set minimum and maximum spawn level for every zone, and this mod sets the max level in each zone to 99. This should make the whole experience more balanced and challenging. Ok, next we are out to get some juicy immersion with these two immersion mods. Animated ingestibles, that means food and drink. With this mod, whenever you eat or drink something, there will be a short animation, just like with Steam Packs. It works for almost all vanilla items, and there are even both first and third person animations. Pretty cool, there was a similar mod for all the medical items like Buffalt and Mantats. That's pretty immersive, I would say. Would have been cooler, of course, if it was always the exact model of what exactly you eat and drink. For example, if you drink a new cut Quantum, there would be actually a Quantum bottle in your hand, and not always the basic new Coca-Cola bottle. But I guess it's not that easy to make. Still, a great improvement. And what happens to the food afterwards? That's right, we go to the toilet and... Wait, I didn't think it would really be like... Hey, what the heck? Do you mind? I'm in the middle of something here. Anyway, we should also wash our hands afterwards. Weird, it only says that the drink option... <gasps> oh my god, you can't wash your hands? But that's so not hygienic. Immersion minus 100, what a horrible mod, uninstall IMMEDIATELY! Night scope, at least you can take a shower and also do the dishes. This mod basically makes all the bathroom and kitchen items around the commonwealth usable. For that it uses assets from the CWSS Redux mod, it is also a requirement of course. This mod originally introduced all those great animated bathroom and kitchen objects, but only in form of craftable items for your settlements. Well, you will probably want to install both mods anyway for the maximum immersive experience. But wait, this was supposed to be an episode about cyberpunk androids. 
Well, they have no need for food or showers, but what they do need are weapons. And of that we got plenty. Giat Famas, for example, also known as the clarinet. Do you know how I know this? Do you know which classic PS1 title had this weapon? Siphon filter, obviously. Why? What did you think I was gonna say? The customization here is not that huge, but it includes some pretty stylish parts. The next weapon is the MK-18 CQBR, also a very cool looking gun. The customization for this one is really huge and also has some crazy options. There are four rails to place parts on, upper, lower, left and right. So enjoy the light show. There are also a couple of different reload animations you can choose from and a cool legendary gun in the style of the Punisher. Then we have some classic action with the single action army. That's a revolver from New Vegas, by the way. This stuff is always welcome. And another one, the Russian Special Forces mod. This is a little pack including weapons used by the Spetsnaz. AM-17, AMB-17 and GSH-18. And now, armed with the hottest new guns, it's time to shake up the commonwealth a bit. What I'm saying is, their be quest mods. Followed Brotherhood by Shody Cast and Unoctium. This one is a bit unusual. Do you know what a visual novel is? Yes, those games where you press X for a couple thousand times. 
This mod is a bit similar, it is an interactive story. To start we have to listen to a new radio signal. Let me know when you have that gizmo recording, Edna. I want this message to be clear. Boost the gain a touch. <coughs> Attention all wastelanders, vault dwellers and brotherhood operatives. And any other freelance operatives in the Commonwealth looking to earn a generous sum in caps. Come to the Memory Den and Good Neighbor to join the exclusive beta test for what will be the most immersive electronic entertainment experience since Grognak the Barbarian versus the Elder Trolls. Oh yes, the Elder Trolls. This will also be the name of the next Bethesda game, but seriously now. This storyteller awaits us in the Memory Den inside his badass power armor. Doc, I think we have our first beta tester. I had hoped you'd be the first one to try this. Me and the doc have everything set up for you. Amari says this modified lounger will work like any other memory den experience. You just lie down and the machine will bring you into my magnum opus. It's a simulation of someone's memories rather than being directly pulled from a live brain. It's a little buggy. Like this one glitch where Sergeant Platner keeps getting pronounced planter. Dr. Amari suggests it's something to do with the hollow buffers, but between you and me, I think she just spelled it wrong during initial data entries. Blah blah blah, so once we enter the pod we find ourselves in the digital world where we cannot switch to third person, or do anything except following those pink navigation fingers and viewing the events. It took me a while to remember, but it's actually like it was in Kellogg's memories. And here we have the chance to see the story of Captain Roger Maxson, the founder of the Brotherhood of Steel. Thank you for your cooperation. Another batch of prisoners so soon? I could have swore we were at capacity already. Kami sympathizers, probably. Or worse, deserters. <laughs> Why don't you ask them? Decorum, Sergeant. These prisoners are under our protection. Besides, Alan, you might have gone AWOL too without that tin can to protect you. And if you think his voice sounds kinda familiar, yes. I don't know how they managed to pull that off, but this is indeed none other than Mark Muir, the voice of Commander Shepard from Mass Effect. Holy shit. Roger Maxson was second in charge of a security team assigned to guard Mariposa. The Codex doesn't explicitly tell us what year Roger was born. We can assume he must have been about 27 years old at the time, given the median age of captains serving in the US Army before the Great War. So yeah, you can interact with certain things to get additional info, and the storyteller will also tell you things on his own from time to time, but uh, that's pretty much all there is to say. It's an interactive story. And yeah, it is pretty cool, actually. And once again, Commander freaking Shepard. We keep bringing new prisoners onto the base, but the commissary says we aren't using any more food than we did a month ago. By my count, we should have been feeding a hundred more mouths for the last month. Should I notify the... <laughs> You're clever, Maxon. I'll give you that. I just wanna hear him say, well bang, okay? <laughs> Maybe there is an easter egg later. Also, I have to say it's not without bugs, unfortunately. First of all, let me save you some time. It's not compatible with enhanced lights and FX, so disable it when you play this mod, or you will get CTDs. And also things happen like you fall through the floor, then the doors close, or you bump into invisible walls. So yeah, make sure to save a lot. But wait, there is another cool quest mod, and this one is really explosive. It's called Diary of a Madman and basically allows you to go full berserk on Fallout's ass. Or, to put it in a bit more comprehensive way, allows you to finish the game without siding with any faction. Instead, blow them all to oblivion if you wish. It is kinda like the Yes Man option from Fallout New Vegas. This mod has two big requirements. Depravity, a harmless bit of fun, and Outcasts and Remnants Quest Mod Plus. 
both great DLC size mods by the way, which adds new factions and quests in a similar direction. I reviewed a part of it in episode 49. So I guess this mod, Diary of a Madman, uses assets from those mods to achieve what it promises. So, to get started, we have to pick up that holotape in the Pikmin gallery, in that safe. There are 6 quests which you can start at any time. So basically you can make peace with all the factions, but then be like, nah, screw you all, I'm an evil android, humanity shall burn. Wait, how did this happen? Well, I guess it's called Diary of a Madman for a reason. You can even blow up Diamond City. Yes, just like Megaton in Fallout 3. Yep, sounds pretty mad to me. But not for an Imperial Star Destroyer. So let's do this. And this is it for this episode. The links to all mods are as always in the description below. Don't forget to endorse the mods you like. And if you like blowing stuff up, hit the like button and subscribe for more. Best new Fallout 4 mods. I thank you all for watching and see you around.